Maybe it's happened. What? It's been three days. Plus hours, minutes, seconds. <laughs> I met him at the disco. He, his name's Travis. Travis? Oh, cute name. Cute guy. I reckon there's something going on. Secret, Secret women's, women's business. business. You'll learn all about it when you're old enough, Jack. Uh, anyway, won't you, PJ? Paige. Great detective fashion, are you? This is our place. We drink here. Uh, like I'm, I'm just here to meet up with a friend, Detective Ashen. You guys could all get to meet me. These are your mates? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, this is Maggie, this is PJ, um, Ben, Jack, uh, this is Travis. Yeah, I know who he is, Joe. You can drink with him or you can drink with us. It's your choice. Jack. What's going on? We've got to talk. No. PJ, what is this? Ask your friend. Please, Jack, come on. Uh, who was that, mate? Yeah, who the hell is that? Don't ask. What? Worst nightmare. Travis, what's going on? No, look, Joe, I've got to be honest with you. There's been some troubles, right? But it's in the past. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Then what? You, you, you wouldn't have spoken to me. No, you wouldn't have danced with me. You wouldn't have... You don't know that. I got a pretty fair idea. Anyway, you weren't exactly truthful with me either. Some people don't like going out with coppers. Uh, see, we're not all that different. Look, Joe, I, I didn't tell you anything about me that isn't the truth. PJ deals with crooks every day, but I've never seen him act Look, like it that. Was, it was another life ago, all right? I've paid for it big time. It's wrong to let it come between us. <laughs> We've had a great time these past few days, haven't we? I do need to know, though, Travis. Oh. I had a girlfriend. I was in love with her. Someone attacked her and she died. They, they said you did it. And PJ was the one PJ who... was just doing his job, all right? I was a different person back then. It wasn't that surprising at the time. Look, Joe, I, I didn't want to hurt you. Joe, I served five years for something I didn't do, I swear to God. I, I don't want to lose you. Maggie, Joe is a copper. So what's he after? Absolutely nothing. She met him at a disco. She liked him. He didn't even know that she was a copper. The photos of what he did to Janice are still on file. You should take a look at them no. sometime. PJ, he has done his time. Unless he does something wrong, whatever he is doing here is none of our business. Close the door, please, Parrish. I guess you've heard all about it, boss. You're not the first person to make an error in judgment. Sit down. Can I say something, I'll please? I'll hear what you've got to say in a minute. Now, I understand that you had absolutely no way of knowing about Travis Watson. You weren't here when he was arrested. PJ and I were. Now, maybe you don't believe what you've heard. But I have to tell you that what he did was about as vicious an act as I've ever seen in my career as a policeman. Bossy... Parrish, you're a police member and this man is a convicted criminal. Don't stuff up. Now, take my advice. Break off any links with Watson now, permanently and forever. And don't just say it, mean it. Mm. Couple lecture? Oh. Coffee? Yes, yeah, strong one, thanks. Listen, Joe, our boss is concerned about you and your life. Yeah, I know. But everyone's just jumping to conclusions about me, about Travis. Yeah, because he was charged and convicted, that's why. Yeah, but we do make mistakes, don't we? I mean, sometimes we get the wrong guy. Sometimes, yeah. Maggie, you don't know him. You haven't listened to his dreams or fallen asleep in his arms. Just be careful. Don't worry, I know what I've got to do to win spilt out. Hey, Joe, sorry about last night. Me too. Just forget about it. No, it's all fine. All I'm saying is that uh, Watson's not the sort of bloke you want to hang around. PJ, I'm not going to jeopardise my job, OK? Wait, well, PJ, I've got a fax from the boys in St David's. A servo at Bridges Mountain, two armed offenders, knocked the owner's wife senseless and took the night's takings. Mrs Collison, Barb Collison? Yeah, she claims that she was on her own. Her husband was called out to a breakdown on the highway. Well, this call out was to get Bob Collison out of the way. Mm. What have we got? A female victim on her own. Sounds like the bloke to be working down near Renton. Got a description? Yeah, perpetrators wore black beans, the eye holes cut out. Hide one of them's right, build is right. Right for who? Watson. Well, he stole from Easy Takes. 
He's a thief as well, is he? Yeah, small stuff as a juvenile. No history of violence. And now he's back. Well, he was at the pub last night. I mean, you saw him The there. survey job was done early this morning. It'd be worth having a chat. Yeah, all right. Take Doyle, but go easy. Follow the book to the letter, all right? So, where is he? Watson, good morning. Senior Constable Doyle. Detective Hashem, how are you? I'd like to have a word inside if you wouldn't mind, sir. What about? So you haven't moved back to the farm, eh? I thought you would have known. My phone passed on. Property had to be sold to pay for the debts. I am uh, looking for a place to live around here, though. Mm -hmm. You're living here on your own? Uh, yeah. They got an interview this morning. New uh, discount warehouse, new place down there on Farrow Street. Mm -hmm. It's not much, but if I can get a start, it's a start. Nah. It's bad luck to leave your shoes on the table. <laughs> I've had all my bad luck, detective. Sleepy last night? Yeah. Alone? Sadly, yes. Did you go out? No. You didn't go outside, not even take a leak? <laughs> No, believe me, Detective Hashim, no, I didn't. Did you go for a drive? No. Mr Watson, what are you doing in town? Five years, yeah? You have a lot of time to think. When I first went in, all I thought about was finding the bastard who did that to Janice. Now all I want to do is move forward and I'll find someone else to settle down. No harm in that, is there, Detective Hashim? Travis, what time's your interview at the discount barn? 10.30. Right, we'll drop you there when we're finished. Well, you want me to go to the police station? We just want to have a word with you, Mr Watson. We won't take up too much of your time. OK, we'll keep an eye out. OK, bye-bye. What you got? Harrison Davids. Barb Collison's got a dislocated jaw, but she's going to be OK. And the husband's confirmed that the breakdown was a hoax. Oh, sounds like PJ's right. They're after soft targets. So he could be right about the Watson character being in on it? Oh, I don't know about that. These uh, fellas were armed. It doesn't seem to be Watson's M.O. Oh, five years in prison, mate. That could change a tune. Not always for the worst, Jack. Look, uh, don't take this the wrong way, Joe, but what did you see in this guy, anyway? Oh, I don't know. Quiet, sensitive sort of a guy. Parrish, it's about time somebody filled in on the facts here. <laughs> Mr Watson. Senior Sergeant Croydon. How are you? Don't you? I haven't done anything. Look me. Doyle. Have we got something happening here? PJ's working on a hunch. A hunch. Get a job here, settle down. That's the plan, is it? Yep. That's it. I choose another town. You can't do anything about me living here, Detective Hashem. That wouldn't be right. Uh, Travis Watson. Trouble at school, started an apprenticeship. You didn't finish it. <laughs> Worst decision of my life, that one. Maybe if I'd stuck with it, things would have been a bit different, eh? Mm. And you took the thieving and a bit of burglary. I was a kid. Mm. Looking for a bit of excitement. Then there was Janice. I never did that. You didn't throw acid on her because she dumped you? Look, I was angry she kicked me out, all right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not proud of some of the things I said and did, but I never touched Janice that night. True says you did. In fact, in the letters that you wrote to her, you called her, where is it, a filthy slut. You ever love somebody? No. You can hate somebody you love. I know all about that. But I'm not the one who did that to her. There is nothing to hold him on. He's teamed up with somebody in prison. PJ, armed robbery is not his M.O. He's a coward at heart. It's way out of his league. He's had five years to learn. Do you want him out of town, or do you want him to go down for the service station robbery? All of the above. Are you sure you're going about this the right way? I mean, what are we doing to find out who else might have done the Collison service station? St David's are on that. Look, I, I, I'm just looking at him as a possible. He's out of prison, he's got no money, PJ, he needs a take job. take my advice. The book is the book. Procedure is procedure. Toss him out and we're back in the dark ages. So you think he deserves a second chance, do you? If he's earned it, yes. Which, I must say, would surprise me. But he got a full remission. And whether we like it or not, we have to live with it. Fossey hasn't changed. Evidence, PJ, where is it? He hasn't changed. Yeah, no, no, I was just, I was just gonna come down. Yeah, right. Fair enough, righto. Yeah. 
Job's gone. Right. Thanks, Jeff. It's good. So. Do you feel we owe you an apology, Mr. Watson? No, no worries. Quick in the dead, eh? We'll give you a lift. Right. Lawson, could you accompany Constable Parrish, please? Jack, can I have a word? I'll be out front getting some fresh air. He's paid his dues. Look at this. Hey? That's his girlfriend. Her name was Janice Edwards. 19 when they met. 21 when she had this done to her. You see, he threw acid on her face, left her for dead. Two days later, her parents turned off the life support system. They couldn't have done that. What's this really necessary? Hey, Jack. Yeah. Don't leave him alone. Thanks for the lift. Figure, isn't he? What? Well, you know, he seems like a real charmer, but underneath. Mm -hmm. Joe, where are you going? Right. I'm supposed to. Supposed to what? Look after me. Sit tight, I won't be a minute. Travis? I need to know about it. The whole story. Oh, I know what you think, so we'll see you to try and explain to me. I want to hear. I loved it, Jack. Yeah, I loved that with my whole crazy heart, you know, like the, the way you do when you're a kid. The way you never can again. Unless you're lucky. I need you to tell me everything. Oh, I, I wasn't even there. No, I, I was angry with her, alright? I admit that. But she was seeing other guys. I was, I was in love with her. I was jealous. It's stupid. I, 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 I told people, friends of hers. I, I, I told them what I'd do if she didn't stop. I didn't mean any of it. You were the one that was convicted, though. Yeah. Now, it seemed pretty obvious. I'd written letters and made threats. PJ knows his job. He, he's a good detective. I, 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 nothing against PJ. No, I gave myself the problem with how I was acting, man. I know, in a funny kind of way, he sort of did me a favour, you know. I, mean, I, was, I was in danger of losing it back then. It's probably. You know, <laughs> just as well I went to prison, gave me a chance to sort myself out. I want to believe you. You've got to believe me. When we met, it was the first time in six years I felt I had a chance at life. He showed me the photos. Look, why don't you decide about them? So let PJ do it for you. Look, how is anybody ever going to believe me if you can't? I've made a mistake about someone before. I can't do it again. Just make your own decision, that's all I'm asking. You know what I mean? It's one thing I learnt while I was in prison, it's to have the courage to know your own mind. Travis, the reality is I'm a copper. And you're a convicted criminal. Neither one of us can change that. So there can't be any relationship. Not now, not ever. Sorry. What, 
What age is you reckon? Go. We dropped him off. Yeah. Mates around. That's Anything great. You can use? No? No. Thanks for your help. Something interesting. Um, two blokes walked into Doreen's service station in the Widgery Road. They paid for all their stuff, and then on their way out, they blatantly pilfered a packet of chocky bickies. Chocky bickey. Mm -hmm. Which way were they travelling? They're coming this way. Now, Doreen got a good look at them and gave us their Rego number as well. Well, was that Travis, surely? Yeah, the description doesn't fit Travis Watson. Well, it's a long shot, but two blokes, natural born thieves, they could be our armed robbers. We're taking a look at. Yeah, all right, check the Rego number first. Mm -hmm. You okay? It's over, okay? I've broken up with him. End of the story. Look, I know it wasn't easy, but it is for the best. Look, Joe, when you first met him, do you think there was any way that he might have known that you were a copper? PJ, he didn't know I was a copper. Oh, are you sure about that, eh? Hey? Yes, I'm sure. Look, what is this? Why can't you just let this go? The poor guy did five years for something he didn't even do. The jury found him guilty. Oh, Look, whatever he did or didn't do, it might be best if he moves on. Senior Sergeant, what brings you out here? Not the beautiful sunshine, I guess. I just wanted a bit of a chat, Mr. Watson. You got a moment? Well, I was going to throw a line in the water. Be careful for a wonder. There's a good spot down around the bend. I'll just grab the gear. I've got a spare line if you'd like. Fished this river when I was a kid. That right. Yeah, further upstream, though. Water's clearer, cleaner up there. Mum and Dad bought their first land up there at Boonia, remember? Good people, your Mum and Dad. Yeah, well, I reckon I disappointed them big time, eh? You know, it's funny. I never killed Janice. But in a way, I killed my Mum and Dad. The way the town here turned on them, tore them apart. So why come back here? There's nothing here for you now, surely. I don't know. Maybe I owe it to them. All right, but... Wouldn't it be easier to start somewhere else? Make a fresh start? You're not asking me to leave my home, are you, Mr Croydon? I can't do that. Just a suggestion for everyone's good. Yeah, well... I appreciate you coming down here looking after my interests. I hope so. Locked away, I found out what matters. I haven't come back to do any harm, Senior Sergeant. I've come back to where I belong. Oh, Doreen's bandits stole more than just biscuits. These guys are serious offenders. That Reggie was hot. They've stolen a falcon. We're going to go look around town for it. OK. I had a talk to Travis Watson. Oh, yeah? Yeah? I suggest that he might like to consider moving on. I've told him it's over. Isn't that enough? Can't we just let him be? Constable, I understand where you're coming from, and I'm even inclined to believe that he's made an attempt to clean up his act, but I have to consider the welfare of the whole town. So he's got you swallowing this whole story, is he? My office, perhaps. My turn to the lunches, I think. The way this is shaping up, our servo bandits could well be these chalky bicky jokers. Yeah, well, I'm checking out any mates Watson might have teamed up with in jail. PJ, I'm asking you to consider the possibility that he may not be involved at all. What, because you had a word with him? Whatever we think of him, we have no just cause to hound him. Hi, that won't be long. Hello, Mr. Riley. Hi. Heard you're back. Hey, Jack. You two know each other. Travis, there really is nothing no, no, left Joe, to I've just, um, I've just come here to raise my glass to, uh, to my last day in Mount Thomas. I decided to pull up stakes. Where else will you go? Oh, I don't know. So I'm not going to stay here, Joe, if it means causing trouble for you. It's other people who've got the problem, you know? Oh, well, mate, PJ seems to have his nose right out of joint. He's just worried about me, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, you boss some. <laughs> Boss came down for a friendly chat. And he's a decent bloke, you know, he's, he's, he's right, I mean. Me coming back here just seems to set things off. You don't have to do this, you know, Travis. Give me a reason why I should stay. Just one. There's no way this could have worked. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. What if I prove I'm on your side? 
what if I prove that, even to Hashin? Uh, boss, that's Dolan Falcon. Now, the same car's been linked with the post office named Robert Renton ten days ago. Ten days? When did Travis Watson get out? Nine. Nine days ago. How many offenders in the arm roll? Two, both wearing beanies with eye holes cut out. So there we go, we've got the same MO, same vehicle, and in this case, Travis Watson is definitely in the clear. Yeah, we checked everywhere for these fellas, no signs of their car. These guys are unbelievable. They tool around the countryside in a stolen car, they don't change the plates, then they rip off a packet of chocolate biscuits for a gag. They must be idiots. Mm. They sound like they're on something. Which makes them doubly dangerous. Boss. Uh, Travis has got something he'd like to tell us. PJ, you might like to listen. I'm not making a statement. I don't want a record of this anywhere, right? I'm putting my life on the line here, senior sergeant. Mates of his, mates in Look, look I never said they were mates. What's your information? Can you guarantee my safety if I talk further on this on that? Job on isn't enough. We need who, when, and where. Mick Crow. Les Ogden, Oggy. He's the worst of the two, the one to watch out for. So what are they planning? Right. Oggy read a story in the paper about this publican woman who, who reckons that banks closing down put people like her at risk. Chris Riley? Yeah, that's her. They're going to hold her up on the back road to St David's. When? Today. Whereabouts? No, they wanted me in on it. I said, no, they're, they're going to kill me. If you've taken it this far, Travis, best to go on. They get, they're going after the takings from the pub at the old river crossing at the intersection with Mill Road. Same. Uh, why don't you use my office? Yep. Crow and the boss is Ogden in the interview room. Who's the mongrel who dobbed us in then, eh? I'll get him. Good work, Parrish. Uh, good work all round, actually. Oh, got two sort of shotties, box of ammo, and right. a box. Lock them and lock them in the property yep. cage. All right, Mr. Watson. How'd you go? Did you get him? Yes, we got him. I'll ring Chris Riley and let him know. What's this? You standing for Chris Riley? You think I'm bad news for Joan? You set this whole thing up using her as bait. We know our job, okay? Travis, you'd better get out of here before either of those two see you. It'd be a copper, eh? Eh? Yeah, any ordinary day, your life's on the line. Right out of the blue. Know what I mean? You've seen these blokes before. They've uh, both got ugly heads. No, I don't think so. They didn't come in for a drink when talking to any of the locals? No, I didn't notice, and I think I would have. Well, how would two strangers know where you'd be and when? What, you'd someone else involved? You mean, you mean like a local? Well, it's hard to believe that they'd find it on their own. Oh, yeah, but everyone knows we're still driving to St David's with our takings. Two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three. Watson should be in the lockup with them. PJ, it turns out that Michael Crow worked near Widgery as a picker. Knows the area pretty well. Now, I know what you feel about Watson, but Ogden and Crow could have got their information elsewhere. Well, Travis Watson came up to me and he said, any ordinary day, a copper puts his life on the line. Right out of the blue, bang, you're dead. This was right after he found out that Parrish had taken Chris's place. Well, he could have been referring to that, surely. Oh, surely, yeah, he's a good bloke. Well, maybe you should tell Janice Edwards' parents that. Thank you very much. 
Listen, in my experience, anything is possible, including a crim trying to straighten himself out, especially a young bloke who's learned the error of his ways. Look, I'm telling you, the guy is sus. Nobody listens to me. I mean, I mean, he comes to town. He happens to meet Joe, who's a copper, who happens to be working with me. The guy should be under surveillance. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, boss. I just spoke to the hospital. Travis Watson's been beaten to a pop. I'm going to head down there now. Yeah, no, there was two of them, two blokes waiting in the dark there. One of them I don't know, knocked me down from behind, the other one put the boot in. You don't remember seeing or hearing anything? No, it all happened pretty quick. Well, maybe there was nothing to see or hear. <laughs> I don't get you, Detective. Well, maybe you just walked on the wall or something. Why would I do that? I don't know, part of the plan. My only plan, Detective, is to rebuild my life. It's not a crime. Maybe not, but when you start dating a copper and dobbing your mate, you have to wonder, don't you? PJ. I don't know. What have I got to do to convince you I've changed? Maybe if you were in a box six foot under, it might oh, be a good idea. You'd really like to help me get there too, wouldn't you? Like it's in private, is it? Look, if you remember anything, you give us a call down the station, OK? Yeah, you'll be the first to know. That's great. It's really smart. Just telling it as it is. You threatened him. It's a con job. Can't you see that? PJ, what I can see is you and your way out of control. Ben told me what happened. I'll see you back then. You OK? I've been better. Who did this to you? Ask the detective here. He's got a theory. Let's go. You risked a lot for Chris Riley. Mm, was it? Any of them really care? They're making inquiries. Look, can't you help them? Yeah. Take your pick. Mates of Oggy and Mix or mates of PJ Hashens. PJ wouldn't have anything to do with this. You know that. <sighs> you know... You know, I met you and everything's good, you know. Only you're a copper, aren't you? You know, you stick with your mates. I did some good today, Joe. It means nothing at all when you coppers close ranks like that. I'm telling you, PJ Hashem's got it wrong. I end up losing the one good thing that ever happened to me. What happened to you? Oh, I'm right, Mrs. Riley, no worries. I just come down to say goodbye. You leaving? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want it, but um, I reckon I can take it here, no? Yeah, I heard it might have happened because you helped the police. I hope you didn't take a bashing on my account. It's my fault. I should have kept my mouth shut, eh? I'm very glad you didn't. The thing is, uh, Mrs Rowley, I'm a, I'm a bit short of travelling money, and I thought, you know, that's why I'm I'd be very happy to help. I, I, you know, just a bit of part-time work, maybe until I you know, get a bit more financial. No. I think we can manage something, yeah. Oh, good on you, Mr. Ryan. Thanks. Uh, I only want me to start. Come on, I'll show you. Now, PJ, are you going to come for a drink? Why well, wouldn't I, Max? Look, I'm, I've, I've got something to tell everyone. Uh, Travis is leaving. Leaving? I just wanted to let everyone know. I believe that when I see it. Meaning? Well, every time he opens his gob, he seems to lie. PJ, I think I know him a hell of a lot better than you do, and he hasn't lied to oh, me, listen, right? So Joe, why don't you, you just have been get over a it? copper since lunchtime yesterday. Oh. You shut up. Do not ever tell me what my job well, is, constable. You know what? PJ. It seems to me like it's good to see him trying to make a few changes, you know? So what? leave her alone. What? Well, wait, wait, hang on. Just, just chill out. Oh, hang on. Yeah, what's going, am I going crazy? What's going on? actually hearing my workmates defending maybe, that animal. Maybe the guy is trying to show that he can change. It's possible, isn't it? Ben, you really believe that, do you? Look, he was you just really helping us out. That. Why would he do that if he wasn't Because genuine? he's got a bigger agenda than I'm. Hold up, that's why. You're sounding obsessed, mate. Obsessed? Yes. What are you going to do about this? Let's go and have a drink. Come on, chill out. Maybe I should get him before he gets me, eh? I tell you, if I've ever needed a day off, it's now. Yeah, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to get up right now and head down to Melbourne. Let's oh. see Dad. Really happy up there, folks. Oh. Travis, I thought you said you were leaving. What the hell's this? Oh. Yeah, Chris Riley offered me a job. Figured she owed me, you know. Didn't want to disappoint her. Job? Here. You can fit in with your plans for me, Mr. Hashem. Sorry about that. Come on, do it. PJ! Get him out of here! What the hell? Let him go! Get him out of here! Get out of here! He threatened me! He threatened me! He threatened me! You saw that! How many times do I have to say that to everybody in this town he is dangerous? Now, can't Joe see that? She's tried. She's told him it's over. She's accepted that he's going. What else can she do? 
I'm worried for her. I have never seen you be so vindictive. Oh, Maggie, he something. did it! For God's sake, he did it! He threw acid on a beautiful young girl's face. Now, we all knew that he did it. The jury knew he did it. He says he had time to think in prison. Yeah, maybe there's something and in what that. what he thought about was, as he calls her, that filthy slut Janice, who, who had the guts to, to actually dump him. And me, the copper bastard who put him away. That is why he's back. Yeah, no, the problem is I moved out of the park and they've already let the van for tonight. Well, Chris could help you out. Yeah, I reckon she already has, eh? Travis, I wish I could, but I, I just can't. No? Still here, mate. Your shot, Joe. Not even a sleeping bag on the floor. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's just no way. No, I'll be right. I'll find us at Vinny's bin somewhere. That'll be cool. I'll see you tomorrow and say goodbye. I'm mate. actually going to um, Melbourne first thing, see my folks. All right. Well, I guess this is it then, eh? It's been, yeah, it's been really something, you know? I'm glad, Joe. Yeah. Take care, hey? Unofficial visit. You try anything, Watson, and you're gone. Another threat. What if I got a tape recorder in my pocket and it's running right now? You want it on the record? You destroyed Janice Edwards. You destroyed her family. Now I'm warning you. Stay away from Jay Parrish. What would you know about Janice Edwards? Hey? Eh? So maybe you were playing around with her as well, is that it? You're sweating, Detective Asham. I'd like to use a gun on me, wouldn't you? But you can't. You've got to follow the rules, right? Me? I can pick the time. The place. You won't know when. Or where. Or how. See you tomorrow, eh? And you went out there, that's very bloody clever. I had to work out whether I was right or not, didn't I? And you reckon he's bent on some kind of revenge? Yes, he was very PJ, clear. PJ, you are the only one that's hearing these threats he's supposed to be making. I'm telling you, he's going to try something. You can't ignore this, boss. He spent a lot of time cultivating Joe. PJ, Joe has gone to Melbourne. She's out of the picture. I know, no, Watson knows that she's gone. I heard them talking about it in the pub last night. Get on to D24, tell them to keep a lookout for her car and warn. Yeah, I'll give her a call on the mobile as well. Let a copper see you doing that. It is illegal, you know. You going to Melbourne? Uh, according to Chris Riley at the Imperial, she left town about 20 minutes ago for Melbourne. That'd put her somewhere near Widgery. Received that mount on My bus switched off, boss. Love it out here. Yeah, I thought you were a city girl. Oh, I must be getting used to it. You want to pull in there? I'm a little bit thirsty. Yeah, right. I'll do with the lolly stop anyway. Meet you back here. Yeah. Right. 
And Thomas, please send your ticket. Take the Widgery Road. Go left on Cole Brook and straight till you hit the dirt. I'll be watching out for you. You've got 15 minutes, Hashim. I don't want to have to hurt her. Listen, Watson, this has got nothing to do... No, this no. has got nothing... 15 minutes. Tell her. I thought you were thirsty. Yeah, it was. What'd you drink? Didn't you have enough money? I just had a golf from the tap over there. Hi. Oh, yeah. Hey, Joe. Hmm? There's this place I really want to show you. Oh, Mum and Dad are expecting me for lunch, so... It's a place I used to go when I was a kid. I'd really want to give you a look. It's, it's not far. Ah, oh, righto. What a day's off for anyway, hey? Yeah. Right. Keep me posted every step of the way. I'll, I'll organise backup. I want to know exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. Try Joe on a mobile again. Mount Thomas yeah. Station to Mount Thomas 258. This is your special place. <laughs> it's a wheat silo. You wait till you see the view from up top. I really don't know if we're going to have time, Travis. <gasps> I don't want to have to hurt you, Joe. It's Hashim I want. Let's go. go. Well? It was turned off before, but now it's not answering. All right, you better get out there and be careful. Clubs are at the Mount Thomas station. The Cold Brook silo's now over. The silo? Well, they're next to the Watsons family property. We should have guessed. Over. Parrish's car is here. No sign of the suspect. Where is 258? Out there via Sutton Road, ETA 10 minutes. Back up is alert. How fast can you climb, you bastard? They won't get here, they won't give you time to help you. You got one minute to get up here, I'm counting. This has got nothing to do with her. Counting! <laughs> That girl, just like everybody says. <laughs> Quickly! You must have loved her very much to be that angry. <laughs> oh, I thought we were winning. I really did. And she fooled me. The bitch, she fooled me. You all do. So what? <laughs> you know, I, I lost everything out here. In everyone's eyes. In my dad's eyes. I wasn't even a human being. So what? You kill PJ? You'll end up back in jail, Travis. I kill Asham, and Asham's gun kills you. That's the way it has to be, Joe. I'm sorry. Move it quickly! No one's gonna believe you, Travis. Who's gonna know? Who's got any choice? He's gone, you're gone. Who's gonna know any different? You and me, Travis. It was real. Don't tell me it was. <sighs> I love you, Joe. Mr. Christ, I didn't, but I did. Quickly! I'm so sorry that to be you, I really am. Come on! Drop the weapon! Drop it! Shouldn't you be home? Yeah. You want to talk? I feel like I've been talking all day. Will there be any more interviews? Well, it'll take a while for homicide and ASD to correlate all the evidence, but... PJ clearly acted in your defence and his own. No one doubts that. I trusted him. Parrish, a copper who doesn't trust anybody might as well give the job away. Look, nobody wanted to dwindle like this. Go home to bed. Thanks, boss. He betrayed us both. I gave him the job, you gave him your heart. 
I reckon you always choose whether or not you're going to trust someone. Yeah. Hey, thought I heard voices. What are you guys up to? Well, I couldn't sleep. And you know, most of the time you get it right. And when you don't, you learn a lot. So I'm going to sleep on it. Good night. All right. See ya. She feels really bad about giving him a job. Well, she had no way of knowing. <laughs> Neither did you. Came back for PJ, Joe. You just got in his way. I honestly believed him, you know that. How could I have gotten it so wrong? We all get it wrong sometimes. Yeah. I should have had more faith in you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about.